Welcome to the Z1 dashboard. In this video, we're going to talk about web streaming. Uh, this is a new feature in version 2020.3, which allows you to use your phone, uh, iPhone or Android phone, uh, or a tablet or iPad. Anything that has a web browser can be used now as a display for the Z1 dashboard. Uh, this is a feature which has been asked for um, quite a while now, and so we're really excited to have it in the dashboard. And now we're going to explain how it works. So uh, first, we have here our Z1 dashboard. And then on the right here, this is a web browser. Um, and for this demonstration, we are running the browser on the same computer. As the dashboard, uh, you probably would never do that, but for um, purposes of the video, it makes it a lot easier to show how everything works. Uh, the concept is the same if you were going to run it on your phone or uh, tablet or whatever other device you want to use. So uh, right now, it's just sitting here waiting for connection, and we're going to talk about how you set this up. So if you go into the settings, on the Z1 dashboard. Under the network tab, at the bottom here, this section called web streaming. So by default, web streaming is turned off. Um, but if you want to turn it on, you click this button here, enable web streaming. Make sure it is checked, and then web streaming will be on. Note that any change you make here does require a restart to the dashboard software. So after you check this box, you will need to restart the dashboard to enable web streaming. Uh, so you click that. Everything else pretty much you can leave uh, as the defaults. So this is the IP address of the computer running the dashboard. Uh, down here is the port number. Um, you can change this if this port is being used by something else. Just make sure that whatever port you use is free on your machine and is not being blocked by a firewall or any other software, virus software or anything like that. Uh, the frame rate, this is uh, just a drop down of how often the new image will be sent to the browser. Uh, 30 is a pretty good number, but if you have a really fast network, you can go higher. Uh, or if you want to reduce network traffic, you can go lower. So you can choose one that makes sense for your system. Uh, this set resolution automatically. Uh, so the display on the browser is actually based on um, the size of the currently displayed dashboard on your computer. We'll give a visual demonstration to make that more obvious, but basically, if you check this box, the dashboard will size to an appropriate size to work on phones and things like that. Um, and again, we'll go into uh, detail showing you what happens with the resolution. So once you've set these up, uh, this right here is the address that you need to put into your browser to make streaming work. Uh, so you can see here we have this HTTP address, and in our example here, it's the same, the 172.16.0.22 colon 29002. So after you do this, you would click OK, um, and then you would restart the dashboard. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this example because I've already enabled it, so I don't need to restart it. So now you have the Z1 dashboard set up with web streaming enabled, and you have your browser open, and you want to type in uh, this address here into your browser window. Uh, and after you do this, this address uh, is not going to change unless you make any manual uh, changes to this, so you can save this address as a bookmark or a favorite or whatever you want in your browser to make it easier uh, in the future. But you enter this address, close out of the uh, settings dialog, and now we have a mirrored version of the Z1 dashboard in your web browser. Uh, and this displays whatever is showing here. So right now, we're waiting for the connection, and that's what we have displayed here. Um, all the buttons on the um, Z1 dashboard still work uh, as normal on the actual dashboard. On the web uh, browser version, they are just images and uh, don't actually function as buttons. 
Now, once you're running the uh, dashboard in the browser, you can double click it or double tap it um, to go to full screen. And then to get out, I'll just escape out and we're back down to our regular um, uh, browser window. Now we had talked before about resolution uh, and the size of the uh, display within the dashboard um, browser window. So the more resolution you have uh, to send back and forth, obviously the higher the bandwidth necessary. Um, so you want to have um, the smallest image possible, uh, but you still want to look good on your system. So this window here, which is the, the Z1 dashboard application, this, um, the size of this is the image that's getting sent over. So if you want to change the resolution, you just adjust the size of the window. So if I go very small, it gets a little more pixelated, but you're sending a smaller image. So you get um, less bandwidth usage. But if I go much bigger, you get a smoother image. So you want to choose an image which, uh, sorry, you want to choose a resolution size of the dashboard which works well for you so that the image you see in your browser uh, is uh, crisp and also is being refreshed uh, quickly for you. So uh, one note about networks. Uh, we do advise that you have a wired connection if possible. Um, it gives us more bandwidth than a Wi-Fi connection. Although, of course, Wi-Fi will still work uh, just as well. And one thing to keep in mind on your phone, uh, you don't want your phone to be using just its regular like 4G or 5G network. It needs to be connected to a Wi-Fi system within your house or wherever you're running this. If it's not, then you, it won't be able to see this uh, IP address. So make sure that your phone is connected to Wi-Fi or your iPad or whatever you're, you're using as a display, um, or even better, you know, hardwired if that's possible for you. So I hope this has been a useful video. Uh, please do all the things that you have to in your YouTube user license contract, which is liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Uh, we'll have more videos soon on the new features in the 2020.3 dashboard and analyzer.